Hello friends, welcome back. War 8, Season 12. We're sitting at 14th in Platinum 2 after a victory earlier this week. Let's get right to it. Today we're taking on 40884, which is a zip code in Mexico, I think. We're going in today with Void and Namor, and making his Alliance War debut is my freshly R4 Warlock. Taking him in, and I actually upgraded him, ranked him up rather, to R4 for a specific fight later on, so... Our uh, opponents today are running the um, what is it, the flow tactic, which is the first time I think I've ever, or we have ever, faced it. So the flow tactic, uh, if you have a defender marked with the control hashtag, and I think there's two different ones, um, there's maybe 20, 25 control defenders. Every time you uh, land a critical hit on them, uh, they will gain a uh, certain amount of power over, um, over time. Uh, and this stacks, I believe, as well. So you really have to be careful um, when you do this. Angela is not a control defender, but I'm just talking over this fight because this is pretty much a, an easy fight. So a defender like Iron Man Infinity War, for example, you know, you, normally you would take in Corvus against him. is a, It's a good matchup, but Corvus crits, uh, you know, 20 times uh, in a row, and you're going to be giving Iron Man a ridiculous amount of power and he'll probably, he'll probably mess you up. So uh, really have to manage your power well. Pay attention to your hits. You can't really play as aggressive. Um, you know, champions that don't crit very much, like Void, uh, or even the Crossbones, if you have a high-ranking Crossbones, would be excellent for this type of tactic. So, All right, Angel is down. We can move on to the good fights. So uh, we've got a Domino on... Uh, Aggression armor and explosive personality. Now this is a bit of a cagey fight only because, uh, in my experience, Domino does not like to throw her special attacks. Um, and it's easy to get backed into the corner. Uh, and normally when I try and create space, I will hit into block. Uh, but you can't do that here because you only have uh, you know, four blocked hits and then on the fifth one you're going to be taking a, a serious amount of damage. So... Um, you really have to play smart here. Uh, try and give her, you know, when she backs off, you need to to go to let yourself walk in. And try and create some space as much as you can. So, the uh, this domino is is max rank, but I think the sig is pretty low. Um, so the critical damage, critical failure damage rather, uh, is not as nearly as you know intense as it would be for a sig 200 domino. So right away she uh, she does throw her special two. Uh, I'm not really sure why I went in there, or why I didn't go in. Um, she might have still been lucky. Um, so I'm I'm really trying to make a concerted effort when I'm fighting dominoes now to to stop attacking into her when she's lucky. Um, you know that last the last war when I got evaded like at a 25% rate in that fight. Uh, granted, that was with dodge, but you know some of those evades could have been avoided and were on me because I attacked into her when, when she was lucky. Uh, and that's you know I understand that's a bad idea, and I need to be doing a better job of of managing that. Um, so all right, so we're trying to bait out another special two. Uh, now I I wasn't expecting the um, the armor to do. You know, such a good job of protecting her, which sounds weird to say, uh, but you know, Void's damage is all direct damage. It ignores armor because it's, it's degeneration. Um, but this fight is strangely long, um, and you'll see as we get close to the end, like there, there was a real danger here that I, I probably could have timed out. Um, I spend a lot of time baiting attacks. I can't now. Here's a situation where I'm kind of backed against the wall. Uh, I can't hit into a block, um, so I really have to just sit there and hope and pray that she throws her S2, which she does, um, and able to punish it. But, you know, that that is the danger with this this fight here. And if you let her sit too long where she's not throwing specials, she's going to build up a ton of armor. Uh, and your basic hits are not going to do anything at that point. Uh, but, you know, the D-Gen, thankfully, uh, will ignore that armor anyway. So, you can see at some point I did hit into her block once. We have one, one stack of armor there from the Explosive Personality. Um... Which also is limiting my, you know, my basic hits for the, for the duration of the fight. So right here, I do attack into her while uh, she's lucky. As I'm feeling the time crunch now, we've got about 30 seconds left, and I have 20% of her health left. And I can just see myself, you know, spending too much time baiting out specials, 
uh, and then timing out with her at like you know five percent so that's really what I'm trying to avoid here uh, I'm trying to get a little bit more aggressive uh, attacking into her a few times when she's lucky um, to parry stunning her even when she's lucky um, yeah so it's 10 seconds left it's go time uh, we don't have <laughs> if we want to win this fight we need to just hope and pray there we go so three seconds left two seconds left and she goes down uh, if she had evaded that final S1, she would have gotten her S3 with like one second remaining. It would have KO'd me. So, all right, up top, uh, we did have a kingpin there on the uh, recovery vigor node, but it was like almost midnight, and I was so tired I, f I forgot to record it. But uh, I did get the full AB. You'll just have to trust me on that one. All right, so this is a green goblin on recovery buffet, indomitable. Uh, nothing super special going on here. Um, you know, as soon as we get the, the heal block up from the multiple debuffs, uh, that'll nerf the buffet, that'll nerf his, his natural healing. Um, <clears throat> I do remember as I'm watching this now that I had quite a bit of trouble baiting out this first S1 from him. So what's up? Six dash backs, seven, eight. Come on, Norman, let's go. Come on. Hitting into his block, trying to uh, bait it out that way. He is just not not doing it. Um, yeah, there we go. Finally, <laughs> uh, I. So I'm thinking to myself here, if he's going to be like this, then I'm going to have to push him to a special two, which I don't really want to do anymore um, because I've gotten clipped by it uh, a little too many times uh, recently. Um, so we're going to try and be extra careful baiting out this special two. Watching for that uh, extra dash forward, which looks a lot like his initial medium. That's why it's so tricky. Uh, we do get that successful dodge off. Fear of the Void is up, <clears throat> so we get the nice attack bonus. And from here, uh, the fight is pretty much under control. We just have to make it through without taking a super bomb to the face. We got uh, two, three, oh, so we got two unique debuffs up, and uh, there he goes, goes down. All right, next up we have another domino on Buffet and Best Defense and Empowered Immunity. Uh, so I'm not going to boost up for this fight, actually, because this guy or gal is running suicides. Um, but I do put on uh, a combat regen boost just to save myself a health potion. I've got 5 out of 5 anyway. <clears throat> so I was pretty confident I could get out of this fight here. Um, especially with running suicides at the beginning. She doesn't shrug off the bleed, which is great. Um, so I'll get a ton of extra degen, and you'll see what a what a difference running suicides makes when you fight Void. Um, you know, normally this is another 565 domino, um, higher sig than the previous one, and you can see we're 20 seconds in, and she's almost half dead already. Um, so yeah, don't don't run suicides on a path where Void is a popular attacker, because uh, I love to see I love to see suicides when I when I play as Void. So. Plus that recoil, you know, that's a nice little addition too. All right, so we're almost—we're not even a minute minute in, and she's three quarters of the way dead. Um, we don't even really need to trigger buffet uh, to activate um, their healing reversal. Uh, there we go, and she's down. So that was as easy as it gets against Domino. Nice to have a, an easy fight against Domino once in a while. <clears throat> All right, up on Boss Island, we've got another Korg on that same. Uh, enhanced SP1, stun immune, physical resistance node. This is only an R4, uh, but I'm still going to boost up with a couple medium boosts for this fight and for the next one. Um, this fight does not go as smoothly as the, um, the last wars did. Um, you'll see I, I make a couple of mistakes here. We'll go through them here. So I'm going to get the intercept to start. Um, so I'm going to try and pay more attention this time to not throwing my S3 when he has rock stacks up. Um, that was one mistake that I made in the previous fight, um, and it really just served to lengthen the fight a little too much. So I'm um, trying to keep, keep our intercept game on point here. There we go, break that S2. His shield is back up, so we're going to work on uh, making sure it is off before we throw our S3. Again, our rock stacks, or I'm sorry, our outrage is climbing pretty quickly. Um, because he is bleed immune naturally. So double medium, go right into the SP3. Uh, I believe his rock stacks are still on the recharge. Um, so this t this will take a decent chunk of life off of him to start. Poke him in the back or stomach. Man, I, I made that same mistake last time too. There we go. All right, so 
I act accidentally activated Imperious Rex. I hit, hit into his block too many times. Uh, he countered, and then I got parried and hit again. So uh, we're not going to get the second Fury off, so I'm at a, a pretty huge disadvantage here. Um, plus I launched that SP2 with his shield up, so it did almost no damage. Um, I get a follow-up SP1 in. Um, so now we've essentially wasted our entire first set of Furies and the Imperious Rex. Um, and we're halfway through the fight, and uh, it doesn't really look like we've done much. Um, I also mistimed the SP1 uh, earlier, uh, so I'm I'm not on the ropes yet, uh, and I know that I'll be able to heal up with a couple special attacks, uh, at least a, a little bit. Uh, but now I'm worried that I'm going to time out because we've got a, a minute left, and he's only halfway dead. So I'm trying to play aggressively, trying to work my way up to another SP3, maybe another Imperious Rex. Um, I have to remember that the special three is going to count against the timer, so. Um, it's really going to take a huge SP2 um, to end this fight. All right, so we, we fire off the SP3. We've got 27 stacks of Outrage. Uh, so I'm hoping as soon as we come out of this, we'll generate one naturally, uh, and then we'll go for a double medium, trigger another SP3, and uh, hopefully use an SP2 to finish him off. All right, so he fires off his SP1. We go in. There we go. We get the uh, second SP3 off so we can have double Furies up. Um, and you can see our, our damage increased significantly with just one Fury up. Um, I think this might actually kill him outright. Uh, yep. Yeah, so we did about 22% damage with one, uh, with two, two Furies up and an SP3. So pretty happy with that. Uh, Could have been better, absolutely. But now is the main event. So this is a Mr. Sinister on the double power gain node. Mr. Sinister is also a control defender, so every time I crit him, he's going to be gaining extra power. Uh, so I'm pop on invulnerability boost. This is just in case I need to tank an SP3 or 2 or 3. Uh, so my original strategy in here was going to be to do a lot of parrying, um, and then he's running willpower, uh, so I could do a heavy attack, and he could I could drain his power that way, because he will be regening um, from the willpower. Um, but after the first few seconds, I realized that that is probably just not going to work. It's going to involve too much waiting around. So I'm really just trying to to play this fight as I normally would uh, with Warlock. You know, try and get the try and get the virus up. Try and keep it up with the SP2, which refreshes the virus, uh, and just really managing managing his power. You can see I can only really go in for a couple hits at a time. Um, and anytime I push him over his SP2, I'm just going to straight out block it. Um, so you can see that his power is draining whenever I have a debuff on him. So that includes the, the armor break debuffs from the SP2, uh, which cause him to regenerate from willpower. If I have at least one uh, infection up, he's going to start power draining from that. So that, that helps a little bit. The power drain is only like 5% over a half a second, so it's, it's really not much. Uh, um, but, you know, everybody, every little bit helps. Um, I think that if I had Warlock Awakened, um, the fight would have gone a little quicker. So he has this, you know, minuscule amount of regen or degen whenever you power drain. Um, and the power drain occurs whenever an opponent is healing while infected. Um, so since Minister Sinister heals so frequently, uh, both from willpower and from his natural ability uh, on crit, um, I feel like the degen over the course of a three minute fight would actually do a, a nice amount of damage. So um, whenever I open that uh, five star gem from the calendar, um, I've already got two tech, but if I, if I were to get a third tech, I think I would, I would use it on him without hesitation uh, and just save the other ones for like Sentinel and maybe Guill uh, Guillotine 2099 whenever she comes out. So, All right, so we're less than a minute left. I feel pretty good. Um, you know, blocking those SP2s is not really taking, giving me that much damage. Um, but, you know, now we're in a spot where I've lost the infection, um, so he is going to start regenerating here uh, when I hit him and power gaining, so I've got to be super careful. Um, we're close to being done, but we're also approaching the 20 second mark, um, and I know that, uh, you know, I don't want to leave this fight with, you know, a couple percentage health points up on him, so. Uh, trying to bait on SP1, keeping the the virus up 
uh, on a timed fight, I'm sorry, the infection up on a timed fight uh, with this much power gain is very difficult. Um, so right in here, we, we're desperate, hoping that SP2 kills him, it does, so we get the solo. Very happy, this was like the first big fight with Warlock, uh, other than me just putzing around with him in uh, you know EQ, so uh, pretty happy with that result. Uh, and from an R4, nonetheless, so Warlock definitely going to R5 at some point uh, in the near future, if I can scare up some more tech ISO. Alright, as you can see, we did uh, go on to lose this war. This was a very close one for us. Um, I think we only lost by a couple hundred, maybe like, what, one or two attack bonuses. I forget what the point structure is. Uh, so the defeat stings, of course, but uh, more concerning is that it appears that this defeat has dropped us back into Tier 3. I'm not really sure how that works, because we have an even record this season, so, you know, we're gaining 40-ish points in war rating, we're losing 40-ish points in war rating, and, and we're just alternating that. So I don't really know how we dropped out of Tier 2, um, but that makes the next war, um, and, and really the rest of the season, critical, because um, we're in a, s a situation now, I think, where if we even if we win, um, our multiplier puts us at a disadvantage when compared to Tier 2 alliances. So, you know, even a win could could drop us spots in uh, Platinum 2. So, um, yeah, next war, very critical. So hopefully we can uh, get a win there, move back up to Tier 2, and uh, and uh, stay in Platinum 2 for the end of the season. So, all right, that's about it. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll check you next time.